vibe coding is cringe. So already this is feeling pretty Pac-Man like. I'm not really sure what the purpose was in recreating the whole of Pac-Man. Almost chippable already. Which caused my computer to freeze. Hi, I'm Oliver H24. Today I'm going to be vibe coding Pac-Man in Unity. I should probably start by saying the term vibe coding is cringe. Personally, I have very mixed opinions about AI. But the purpose of this video is so that I can stay up to date with what is happening with AI and to learn what is possible. In my previous videos with AI, I let the AI control all of the design choices and the order that we do things and also tell me what to do in Unity as well. With vibe coding, you're in charge of what gets coded and when, and AI is just responsible for writing the code in the way that you ask for it. Okay, so I've got a blank Unity project open. I've put this on GitHub so I can undo any mistakes and I have ChatGPT and I've sent in our first prompt. I said we're going to work together on a clone of Pac-Man in Unity and then I've given it some rules to hopefully get the best possible code from it as close to how I'd normally write it myself and we can copy and paste this and change it as we go on if we find other things we want the AI to do differently. So first of all, it's written a grid manager script. So let's slap that into the project. I did ask that it use private variables where possible and not public ones, but it ignored me and it's just used public ones. So I've just made all three of those private. These two variables aren't even used within this script. So I'm actually just gonna delete those entirely. We don't need them. Next, it gave me a Pac-Man movement script. So I copied and pasted that into the project and it worked. I then asked it to update the movement script with collision detections and it sent me back this. So we're going to copy and paste this in and it works straight out of the box. So that's awesome. Next, I found a screenshot of Pac-Man online and I copied out the map into Unity's tile map. So already this is feeling pretty Pac-Man like, but it controls pretty well, actually. It's pretty nice. Even if you try to turn slightly early, it's quite forgiving and it'll still try to make the turn when it's able to almost shippable already. Now at this point I got quite sidetracked and went on a bit of a side quest. I took a screenshot of the game and I opened up Clip Studio Paint and I drew over the top of all the lines. Now I'm not great at drawing straight lines or drawing or art but I quite like this style of art where it looks a bit rough and it is quite simple. I also added a bit of a side view onto all of the walls to make it feel a bit more 3D and it took about half an hour to draw over the top of everything. Once I'd done that I used a lighter colour for the top and then a darker colour for the walls to give a 3D effect if you will. I then took this and put it back into Unity and hit play and the game still worked. I feel like adding some artwork in made it suddenly feel a lot more polished. Even though there's only two scripts in this game, it feels a bit more complete than it should do. Next up, we're going to add the pellets and collectibles. So I'm going to start a new conversation with ChatGPT just to sort of refresh everything. And I'll show you how you can take your whole project and send it to ChatGPT very simply. So I've got this Python script that ChatGPT wrote for me that will search through this folder for any CS files and it'll search through any subfolders for CS files and it'll copy them all together into one output file. So I just run this and then I just press enter to exit and if I open this output file you can now see that it has all of the scripts from this project in one file and it has the file names of each script as well. So all I have to do is control a to copy it all, Control C. Now in ChatGBT, I can just write, here's the source code for the project so far and Control V to paste it in. And then it will just have the whole project up to date in chat. So you can see here, I've just sent the original message again. I've added the rules back in and then I've just said, next, can you work on the pellets and collectibles? Start by writing a script that will check for collisions and collect them. So I copied the pellet script into the project and I used the tile map again so that I could paint the pellets into the level. This worked really well and I was able to really quickly fill out the grid without cluttering up the hierarchy. I then hit play and I was able to pick up the pellets. Nice. 
I then noticed on the pellet script it mentioned scoring logic, so I asked ChatGPT to write the scoring logic. It gave me a game manager script to handle the scoring, and it updated the pellet script to add 10 points to your score when you pick up a pellet. I then hit play and collected some pellets. And then when I stopped the game and checked the console, I could see that the pellet collecting was adding to my score. Next I added in some art for the pellets and I also added a big pellet which is just different artwork and I also changed the score from 10 to 100. I then asked it to write a script to display the score on the screen and it gave me a code to do that and it also gave me an updated game manager to handle it as well. Next I asked it to handle teleporting when you go off the side of the screen and it works, awesome. Next I added in some artwork for Pac-Man and I got ChatGPT to write some code to change the rotation depending on what direction you're going and also to flip the artwork over when you go right or left. As you can see I also got it to animate Pac-Man while you're moving and to stop animating while you stood still. Next I got ChatGPT to spawn in some visual effects when you pick up a coin and also some light rays behind the big pellets. The small pellet effects are a bit overkill, so I toned it down a little bit. It does look a bit like dust, but who's judging? At this point, the conversation with ChatGPT is getting quite long. So what I usually do is just start a new conversation and I include the original message, the rules and the code base again. And this time I asked it to write a script for the ghosts. It gave me a script and I copied it into the project and made four different coloured ghosts. I hit play and they sort of work, but they just move randomly at the moment. And if you collide with them, nothing happens. A really quick improvement was just to ask ChatGPT to make it so the ghosts couldn't do 180s. This means that the ghosts keep moving in the same direction until they hit a corner. And then when they reach a corner, they'll never move back in the direction that they came. They'll always take a different route. Unfortunately, one of them then walked into the teleporter, which caused my computer to freeze. So I asked ChatGP to fix it and make the ghosts use the teleporter as well. And that worked. Next, I asked for the ghosts to hurt the player if you collide with them and cause a game over screen with a restart button that restarts for level. Next, I did some artwork for the ghosts rather than using circles. And even though it plays the same, it suddenly adds a lot more character. I think this is quite an important takeaway point. When you're making prototypes, if you don't have any artwork at all, you are missing part of the feeling you get when there's something that is more representative of what the game will look and feel like. I also got it to flip the sprite depending on if they're walking left or right. This did make me feel like the Pac-Man sprite looks really weird when it's moving up and down and is rotated. So next I asked it to change the Pac-Man code so that when he moves up and down he also doesn't rotate. Weirdly though it looks great on the ghosts but it looks a bit weird on Pac-Man. I'm not sure why, hopefully if there's an artist watching they can explain why, but if I had to guess it's because Pac-Man is more from the side view and you can only see one eye whereas the ghosts are kind of from a diagonal view where you can see both eyes so they're sort of looking to the side and looking forward at the same time. Since we've got a game over screen, the next step was to add a victory screen. So for now, when you collect all of the pellets, you win. I'll probably use this artwork for the thumbnail of this video. Now one of the things that I'm procrastinating is when you pick up one of the big pellets, you should get a Super Pac-Man mode where you can turn the tables on the ghosts and eat them. And the reason I've been putting it off is because it probably means refactoring a bunch of code for the ghosts, for Pac-Man, and for the pellets. But I asked ChatGPT to do it and it's given me all of the codes. I also made a frightened sprite for the ghosts and for Pac-Man I just made him a larger size. When you eat the ghosts they just return to their starting positions. And I think honestly I'm gonna leave it here for this game. I'm not really sure what the purpose was in recreating the whole of Pac-Man but I feel like we've accomplished what we set out to do. In terms of the pros and cons of vibe coding it's actually quite fast. Some of the scripts I've not really had to look at so potentially there are issues there 
that I would find if I looked through them. But in terms of prototyping, this is really quick. I do actually enjoy coding, so I'm not really looking to completely replace it or anything like that. But I would say this is a different type of fun. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and let me know in the comments. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Goodbye.